I love watching uh, BDA Law. That's my nigga, yo. Brago. to school and for some people it's great they were tired and bored at home rewatched all their favorite anime and so it's time however there are some things you might have missed even though you were enjoying yourself over the summertime or bored out of your mind and i'm here to catch you up all right it's not about the summer or anything it's about just recent things that's occurred in the chapter and so we're not gonna waste any time these are nine ten maybe eleven things that you probably missed that happened in one piece recently and mihawk He's a major factor here. Hey, so now that we officially have to Wano, we're sailing to a new island after what feels like quite a long time. Okay, it doesn't feel like quite a long time. It was a long time. Oh, damn near four years. So, it's always hey, an exciting yo. breath of fresh air when we get back to the sunny and head somewhere new. Not to say that Wano wasn't fantastic, but before the dust completely settles, post Wano, let's go over a couple things you might have missed recently. Okay, so, in chapter 1058, we saw Luffy being in the cage. Well, he's being pummeled by Nam, who may now canonically have conquered. Hockey. First, before we talk about that, speaking of Congress, what? Flex it right now in that sub button. Look down, make sure you are subscribed. Yo, and what she said, I'm YouTube, like, sometimes YouTube has. I'm like, YouTube huh? His moments. It certainly helps me out. Definitely There's no way. Content for you guys, okay? So, thank you so much. But seriously, back to Congress Hockey. Nami may or may not canonically have it. But anyways, Luffy's apologizing and asking to be let out of the cage. Fast forward a few panels, and we see Buggy begging Crocodile and Mihawk for his life. And Mihawk says, funny enough, or ironically enough, that he may be the first person to become emperor by saying, I'm sorry. Uh, just a little funny, ironic moment as we see a joke across the sea. You gotta love these Oda cutaways, right? Hey, Next, who stops new boundary? that's we'll go back to interesting. Because I didn't even really, un I didn't really catch that, like, as this, Luffy was in the same kind of predicament, right? Although it was a joke as Buggy. And maybe that could mean something in the future. It seems more of a joke now, but... Hmm. My favorite arc because he had the GOAT, the Flamingo. He gave bounties for the Straw Hats in an attempt to have them intercepted after things went just drastically awry in dressing room. So he went through most of the Straw Hats, giving them stars and a price on their heads, putting Usopp on top with a whopping half a billion or 500 million very bounty. Now, post Wano, we have all of the new bounties for the Straw Hats, and surprise! Surprise, surprise, Usopp's new bounty is, is 500. 500 million. A nice, a nice little callback from Oda, if you ask me, but I also think it plays into the fact about the lies Usopp tells finally coming true. Maybe just a little bit. What was the saying? A lie is halfway around the world before the truth has his boots on. Well, these lies for Usopp, they have certainly made their way around the world and back at this point. Shout out to Oda. Next, Zoro and Sanji birthday bounties. Okay, quick tidbit. The Zoro, specifically Zoro, and his bounty fiat has been insane. Okay, for people that didn't know, in the scans, right? And not saying I read the scans. I mean, obviously I read the fucking scans. But in the scans, it gave Zoro <laughs> uh, a 1 billion, 100 million, and 11 berry, right? But in the official set, 1 billion, 111 million berry. So, going off the scans early, shout out to Sandman AP, he said, well, based off of the Japanese version, his bounty should be 1 million. The scans were correct. And he was saying, I hope they correct it. Now, here's a plot twist. The official One Piece account announced that there was an error and that the Japanese translations was actually wrong and that the correction needed to be made. So when the official came out, it was a debate between the scans and the official about what was actually correct. The official ended up being correct, but it was not basing it off of the Japanese version because that was incorrect. They just got an update from higher up, right? You know, like Toe Flamingo told Moria? No, it was it was from higher up. Either way, Zora's <laughs> bounty is 1,111,000,000 berry. And of course, Zora's birthday is 11,11. And funny enough, Sanji's bounty was 1,032,000,000. Oh, I actually didn't know that about March. Zoro's birthday. Second, so both were nods to my boys and their birthdays. For Jinbe, I'm not sure what that means. He was just 1.1 billion. And, uh, and I think the cost for shark meat at Sabodi is 1.1. <laughs> Alright, let me chill, let me chill. Shout out to Jim. Either way, this thing caused quite a stir. Now, Mihawk. There's a lot of stuff going on with Mihawk. So, there are three things we gotta touch on, as we've learned quite a bit since we got to see the infamous Cross Guild in this recent chapter. So, in this flashback to him helping form Cross Guild, we see Mihawk thinking that both him and Crocodile have a strong distrust in others. Now, we already knew this from Crocodile turning Captain Hook on Nico Robin, but Mihawk, well, it explains why he's alone. But what happened? Maybe Shanks broke his heart. Because he could no longer compete against Shanks, he had nothing else to strive for. He was already the world's greatest, but who knows? All I know is that when we do 
you finally get a Dracula Mihawk backstory, it's gonna pull at some heartstrings. And Oda is basically telling us Mihawk at some point got betrayed, and this is why he doesn't. Maybe not. I think, uh. You think it was, this is because he got betrayed? I mean, it could be. It might be. Because that's why he's a loner. Maybe that's why he's hunting Marines. You know what I'm saying? Like, why he was, he was hunting Marines. So maybe, he, he, I think he's on to some. Shout out to Brago. Don't trust anyone at this point. For the most part, he's someone trusts Shanks. The second thing about Mihawk that he may have inadvertently told us is about the situation with Roy Hancock. He says that the Marines have had his island surrounded and that he will have to leave his base, which kind of implies that they're just going to keep coming. Now, Brock, what are you talking about? What does this have to do with Hancock? Oh, oh, oh. Back to Hancock, we know that Amazon Lily is not only her home, but the home of her people. She can't really pack up and just leave. I mean, she, she could, I guess, but where would they all go? So, this tells us when we see Amazon Lily again probably will be under the world government's control because she cannot pack up and leave her people she has to defend it but they're going to continuously send people and ta-da pink mamba shout out to my boy bow Weezy. kobe was sent there as well <laughs> which does add the plot element so guys mihawk is telling us the world government they do not stop the numbers can be overwhelming and for boy hancock it's looking more and more grim the third thing about mihawk and i find this to be super interesting is actually another parallel to Zara. So Mihawk was known as the Marine Hunter back in the day, which begs the question, let me ask you guys, who, what do you think Mihawk did, or what's his greatest feat as the Marine Hunter? What level of Marine do you think he took out? In his first appearance, he was hunting another pirate. Zora, funnily enough, was introduced as the Pirate Hunter, but his first appearance, he was more so hunting a Marine. Well, he was definitely locked up by the Marines, but regardless, a very interesting parallel between the current and very future, interesting. we're assuming, world's strong. No, shout out to bro. It equals he's breaking down how dangerous cross is. And when we reach the topic of Mihawk, it said that he has greater sword skill than even Red right here, the Emperor. That being said, it begs the question: does sword skill equal strength? This this up, has Allah? left the fan base completely discombobulated. Because people, of course, are now separating skill from strength from hockey. Now, now, how does one attain strength if not through skill? But is this Oda trying to tell us that Mihawk is still equal or superior to Shanks? Is Oda trying to revive the age-old argument of Shanks versus Mihawk? Is Oda clarifying things by telling us, hey, Mihawk is kind of that guy. Stop sleeping on him just because he was a warlord. This is almost confirming for a fact that warlords are very important and have been very important in the world. Just because Luffy took out a few of them does not mean that they are not impactful and super Super influential people look at where they came from and where they are now and if Mihawk was not a reminder you know it's crazy I feel home on that because we almost or myself included right I almost dismissed a lot of the warlords because you know we fought them kind of early on you know Gecko Moria Crocodile you know this is like early on like we, we a formal I said I mean Crocodile is a formal warlord but like these are kind of the names that are associated with the warlords and there's people that we've defeated uh, a long time ago. So when we think of Mihawk, is he that strong? He was just a warlord. You know, warlords are or were very powerful people and should be respected in their own right. Uh, and I think that's what, and that's almost why I said during the reading that, you know, this this cross guild is like the new warlord system. It's almost like he disbanded the old one because of this lack of respect. You know, maybe not just for that reason, but like uh, he understood that power scaling no longer made sense for warlords as it was too spread out. Where now in this cross guild, it kind of does make sense because we have people like Crocodile who's probably a lot stronger now, but we see what his bounty's like. And then we have people like Mihawk coming together with Buggy the Clown. Although Buggy the Clown, I don't believe is strong. His level of influence and his charisma is what really allowed him to get that bounty and become emperor. He, the, the boy, the nigga got influence, bro. He could really put people together. And that's dangerous in the world for One Piece. You know, obviously he played a part in putting the cross skills together. So he should get credit for that. So shout out to my previous caller for making light of that.
a look at the bounty of crocodile basically higher than any right hand that we've seen in the series so far it probably could be higher than even ben beckman's who knows but either way these are going to lead to continuous debates and i thought these are amazing callbacks or nods or ironic moments that oda had in the story and even when oda showed his chopper and it somewhat made it look like carrot he was scared the heck out of me we're not gonna lie to you guys but either way that being said what was your favorite thing from this recent chapter leave your thoughts below did you notice something that everyone else missed leave that below as well a comment video will be coming I haven't done that in a long time the full comment video will be posted in the memberships link in the description down below but you guys will be able to see it as well uh, but again but thank you guys so much make sure to like the video if you did subscribe to the channel for more content like this follow me on twitter at brock with the ace follow me on instagram at brock with the ace thank you to my patrons and my members i appreciate you guys all so much i have a big announcement that will be what up k jiggity you guys stick around how you that. feeling bro but i will certainly catch you guys in the next one peace Thank <laughs> you.